This week on Dance of Joy, we talk about O. Henry chocolate bars, fireplace hip circles, and a Christmas vampire. All that and more as we watch season four, episode nine of our favorite 80s hit sitcom, Perfect Strangers. Hello and welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. My name is Sophia. I am one of your hosts and joining me as always is my brother and co-host. What's up, Imran? Merry Christmas, sister. I don't know what it is. I know it's March, but I'm in a very festive Christmassy mood for some reason. Oh, I think I know what it is. It's season four, (laughs) episode nine of Perfect Strangers. A Christmas episode entitled The Gift of the Mepia. <laughs> I love it when you binge watch network sitcoms, these holidays come quicker it's Christmas and faster. It's Christmas all year round. Yeah, you can, can have all... Christmas anytime. This is an episode you can watch and enjoy Christmas anytime. Yes, The Gift of the Mepia, episode nine. This is a play on a uh, classic story. You heard Christmas of that? Christmas story. A Christmas yeah. story. You heard of that fella, O. Henry? Yep. The fellow that wrote all those, like, the original twist ending guy, right? (laughs) He's the original twist ending. Uh, He published a story in 1905 titled... Which was called... The Gift of the Magi. Right. It was a short story about a young husband and wife and how they deal with the challenge of buying secret Christmas gifts for each other with very little money. Which is not at all what this episode of Perfect Strangers is about, but I think they just played off the title. Also, he made great candy bars. Wasn't that a candy bar? (laughs) Oh, Henry. Was that the same O. Henry? Uh, I don't know. But there was an O. Henry. Wow, that's a really obscure candy bar reference. I don't think anybody's going to remember that. I think I think he uh, in 1905 when you purchased his story in the bookshop, you got a free candy bar. Oh, that would be lovely. That's how you get kids (laughs) reading. Uh, Anyways, speaking of reading, you crack open the TV guide back in 1988 and the description would have read Balky gets caught up in the Christmas spirit and invites the lonely Mr. Gorpley to the boys Christmas Eve party, which ruins the holiday mood for Scrooge like Larry. Oh, what a Scrooge Scrooge like Larry. <laughs> yeah. I Larry's mean, the Scrooge. The last, the, ho- the we'll last, cr- the, remember this is like the second Christmas episode. Yeah. Larry made a big deal about wanting to not being able to go couldn't, home. They got snowed in. He couldn't get back he home. Got, he couldn't give out the presents. He was very unscrooge like in that one. Yes. Uh, All into Christmas. So let's find out what happened to Larry then. Yeah. That made him Scrooge like. In this episode, we have our standard cast of the boys and their girlfriends and the ever bickering Lydia and Harriet, played by Belita Marino and Joe Marie Payton France. We also have, of course, Mr. Gorpley, played by Sam Anderson. Sam playing Sam. And then there's um, a couple of sort of side little actors that we'll recognize. Remember Jimmy, the security yes, guard? Yes, Jimmy gave the Balky. The guard locked yeah. the window. He also gave Balky his whole belt to hold on to. Remember, here, hold on to this. I'll be back. Oh, that's right. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> so Jimmy's back and he's played by Jim Dugan. He did, he was all, he did a lot of stuff in the 80s. I love Jimmy, that's the security right. guard. And this episode aired on December 16th, 1988. So it was the Christmas season. But it's Christmas 1988, people. Take yourselves back. (laughs) You can take yourselves back because Perfect Strangers perfectly streaming on IMDb TV and Amazon Prime Video. Uh, Either way you want to look at it. Totally free. They own both of them. So check it out. Follow along. Let's get into it, sister. Let's get into it. We start with Act One, and we're where we've been for many in Act One, which is the basement of the Chicago Chronicle, where, yep. of course, Larry and Balky work. And it is decked out in Christmas decorations. They got a tree, yes. they got stockings, and Merry Christmas signs. Yeah, remember Santa when Claus. it was Halloween and oh, there was yeah. Halloween everywhere? They really now love it's Christmas everywhere. They, they really love, love their decorating the mailroom for the holidays that <laughs> the nobody basement, sees except yes. for them. So, um, Balky's at his mail table and a bunch of our friends are around Lydia, some other coworkers, Jimmy's the security guard is there and Balky's very, very excited. He's showing everyone he's got this box, uh, that was sent to him a Christmas present from his mama from Mipos. Okay. And he's, yes, that mama sent Balky a Christmas present. 
Um, and so everyone's crowded around and Balky pulls out of this box this like, they call it a cup, but it's like a big like round chalice thing with a cover and it's wooden and it's very intricately um, carved. Yeah, it's a carved. giant uh, cup, like a stein with a lid, yeah. but it's wood. Car- it's huge. I don't know if you're yeah. supposed to drink out of this, but the carvings are really nice. I mean, it's a nice piece. It's a big, nice, heavy wooden piece. Yeah, and it's hand carved and everybody's ooing and eyeing and saying it's beautiful. And Balky explains that it's a Davros cup. Ah. Because it's made by the finest artist on Mipos, Davros Praxiteles. Da- Davros Praxiteles. I love that name. Uh, it's I a didn't Davros look that cup. up. I want to see what that means. Um, you think it's anyway, like Greek? It's a Greek translation or something? Maybe. Davros sounds very Greek. Um, and so everyone's like, oh, it's so detailed. Oh, look, it's beautiful. And he explains that it takes Davros one year just to carve one cup. Wow, he must not sell a lot of cups that way. Yeah. How does he keep a business going? Uh, anyways, everybody is just ooing and eyeing over this cup when suddenly Mr. Party Pooper Gorpley walks out of the office going, hey, 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 hey. What is this? Yeah. He's busting it up. He goes, just because it's Christmas Eve doesn't mean we're still not working here. He's telling everyone to disperse Aww. like a party pooper that and he is. And he poops on their party and everyone disperses. And then Balky very excitedly shows Mr. Gorpley the cup. and he And he says that. His mother sent him this beautiful cup, and Gorbley's like, I know, I know, your mother loves you. She gave you a present. I'm all joked up, kind of sarcastically. But as soon as he says that, Balky puts the cup on the table and starts doing the Heimlich oh, maneuver no. on Gorbley. And Gorbley's like, what are you doing? And Balky said, you said you were choking. I'm giving you the Hemhawk maneuver. The Hemhawk maneuver. <laughs> But Gorp- what he said is, I'm all choked up. And Gorpley's like, I'm over it. So yeah. I like this subtle hint. This line, Gorpley goes about, yeah, your mom gave it to you. She loves you. I'm all choked up. Yeah. Oh, there's a subtle little foreshadowing about his relationship with his mother coming up. Uh, but ham hock maneuver is hilarious. Ham hock maneuver. Uh, and so Belky stops squeezing Gorpley. And just then Larry enters from the parking gr- garage and he is all. Uh, disheveled, I guess is the word. Yes. His coat is like off his shoulders. He's frazzled. He's carrying <laughs> his a box. His tie and, is all askew. And Balky goes up to him and goes, Cause, what happened? Were you mugged? <laughs> and Larry <laughs> goes, worse. I went shopping on Christmas Eve. And uh, obviously it is a madhouse out there. And when you go shopping on Christmas yes. Eve. Uh, and we notice Gorpley is standing there kind of eavesdropping. He's holding the cup. Yeah. He's listening to them. Uh, but why was uh, Balky shopping on Christmas Eve to get a certain gift? Larry. Oh, Larry. Um, yes. Larry yes. had to get a so gift had, for a certain and he summer. He has the gift and he opens up this box and he pulls out this like pink sweater with some like yeah. sparkly waves on it. It's got glitter white zigzags and it's, it's like very this pink 80s. cashmere. It's a very yeah. 80s. Is this in style? Would Big you wear, shoulders, would you narrow wear something waist. like this yeah. now? I don't know. Negative. No, um, didn't come back and stop. Wide shoulders, narrow waist, it's like, yeah. And so he holds it up, and he's doing that whole like, uh huh. He's like, "What do you think?" And Balky says, "I think it's a little busy for you, but." <laughs> <laughs> and then Larry, and then Larry's like, "No, it's not for me. It's for Jennifer." Oh. And he said it cost him one hundred twenty-five dollars, but it's worth wow, it. Wow, it's one hundred twenty-five nineteen eighty-eight dollars. That's an expensive that sweater. That is an yeah. overpriced. That's expensive for now. Yeah. Yes, even now. And he said he's he tells Balky his plans to give the sweater to Jennifer that night at their Christmas party, and he expects her to be thrilled. So at the mention of party, Gorpley's ears kind of perk up, and he walks over and he goes, "Oh, so." Having a little Christmas party, eh, Appleton? And Larry's like, party? No, I'm not having a party. I wouldn't call it the party as such. He's like, just, you know, just having some few people getting getting together and killing time. And then Gorbley goes, I'll have to watch that on the lifestyles of the rich and boring. Of course, he's okay, just so insulting right, that everything. Is a, a reference uh, to a show that used to be on TV called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Yes, remember Robin Leach. Balky has done a Robin Leach impersonation Yes, that's previously. right, but I think some... Robin Some Leach. younger listeners might not remember this show. I'm um, Robin Leach. Anyway, it was Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Gorpley turns into Lifestyles of the Rich and Boring. Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous 
aired from 1984 to 1995. Yeah, a long time. And it was just like episodes digging into like the fancy extravagant lifestyles of rich people, basically entertainers, athletes, socialites, magnates. It's basically like Instagram reels or, on TV. Yeah, or <laughs> I was going to say cribs, but even that's like an old MTV reference. Yeah, they did cribs, but it's uh, and yeah, yeah, of course, known known for it's basically it's now Robin Leach. You would know it now as the Kardashian show. Basically, yeah, basically. it's the same thing. <laughs> they just taking you into their house. Same yeah. house. Or so housewives or something. Gormley yeah. gives him the insult, walks away, at which point Balky is like, cousin, you didn't ask Mr. Gormley to the party? And I was like, no, I didn't ask Mr. Gormley to the party. And Balky goes, well, why not? He's going to feel left out. And Larry just goes, he is left out. He is left out. <laughs> he, he tells him this is our first annual Christmas party. I want it to be a time for all our friends to get together, share an evening filled with Christmas spirit. If Gorpoli comes, he's going to ruin everything. And then Balky's like, oh, how can you say that? And Larry goes, it's easy. He's going to ruin gonna everything. He's going to ruin everything. <laughs> and it just goes, I don't want him at Ugh. the party. Okay, There's so the Scrooge he's like being very Larry. Scroogey on Christmas, not. But, you know, what we've seen from Gorpoli. Yeah, he, yeah, you don't want to. He's you don't want to be a difficult person, exactly. Yeah, I don't think you want to be around. So it's place. not so unreasonable at this point in the episode. It's like, oh, you kind of can be on Larry's side, but you can also see where Balky's coming from. So we cut to the next scene, and it's uh, a little bit later that day, and we're still in the Chronicle basement. And Balky, it, it seems like everyone's gone home, but Balky is taking down all the Christmas decorations, and Gorpley's on the phone. And we hear Gorpley's side of a conversation that he's having into the phone. And Balky also overhears it. And this is a classic misdirect joke. This is great. <laughs> where he says, great, great news. I'm free to spend Christmas with you. What do you mean? So what? No, I didn't ask my wife, but I have a hunch. She doesn't want to spend Christmas with me. She's been remarried for two years. <laughs> oh, geez. So how about it? Can I come over for Christmas? No, no, I understand. No, you've got family coming over. Yeah, okay, I'll try again next year. Yeah. Bye, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I Classic. Do. I, had a I saw that coming, yeah. I had a feeling like you, there's only one way to end this conversation, yes. and it has to be bye, Mom. It's Sad always going to be and bye, funny Mom, or at the bye, same Dad. Time. Yeah. Like, that's brutal. Like, that yeah, was his mom so saying, no. Okay, so Gorpley hangs up the phone and looks sad. And then Balky kind of startles him because Mr. Gorpley is like, ah, oh, Bartokobus. Uh, and Balky starts at saying, he's trying to apologize. He's like, look, about tonight, Cousin Larry and I. Uh, he's trying to, his <laughs> he, heart wants him to invite, yes. wants to invite Gorpley to the party, especially after hearing this phone call. But his mouth won't let the words come out. <laughs> so he goes, Cousin Larry and I, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> He does it three times. And then Gorpley's like, what's the matter, Bartokomus? You got tinsel caught in your throat. <laughs> he asks Gorpley if he has a place to go for Christmas Eve that night. And Gorpley says, I'm Sam the man Gorpley. I've got <laughs> invitations running out my ears. Do I have a place to go for Christmas? What a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughs. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then Balky says, oh, my God, what a relief. And he said, for a second, I was going to ask you if you wanted to come to our party. And then Gorp was like, OK. OK. He's like, wait, wait. <laughs> and Balky's okay, like, wait. what? And he says, OK, I'll come to your party. And then he's like, yep, see you tonight. And then he goes, OK. And Balky's like, OK. And Gorp leaves. And then Balky does, does another OK. Oh, he's just got himself into it. And he, a... then he can... He's like imagining how Larry's going to react. And we get a third. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He just got himself in a pickle. He's going to ex explain this to cause Larry. We transition uh, to a lovely outdoor shot with like fake snow and icicles yeah. painted on the building. Uh, it's not bad. It looks pretty convincing. Uh, that's actually snowing. Uh, and uh, it's the t it's it's the party night. And this a whole apartment again, decked out in decorations. Larry's pulling out some more d'oeuvres out of the oven. I don't know what these things are. They're little wrap things. They're very yeah, hot. I don't know. They look like little dumplings or something. Right. It looks like dumplings. And he's picking it up and he's tossing it. It's very hot. And he takes a little bite. And it's and hot. Like and then, chews it and like, and a chews mouse. like a mouse. Yes, he does his little, yeah. <laughs> his little rodent chewing. We <laughs> both had that thought. It was yeah. so funny. And then he just goes, 
perfect. And he picks up a clipboard and checks a box, I'm sure, that says, the are these things P. perfect? Perfect. Perfect. Everything's got to be perfect. <laughs> So Balky comes bursting through the front door and he like, you can see he's like thinking about how he's going to say it. And then he finally goes, okay. Like he's about to announce <laughs> yeah. something and he puts this box that he's carrying down like triumphantly. And, but before he can tell him anything, Larry runs up to him. He's so excited. He's like, look at this. And he's pointing to all the, again, it's like so much Christmas decoration oh. all over their apartment, just like at Halloween. And he said, this is going to be a perfect Christmas party. And Balky looks around at the apartment. And he goes, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so the guests are about to arrive any minute. Larry makes Balky tr try the eggnog. Tell me if it's okay. And he, and he pours a little bit into a cup and Balky tastes it. And he goes, mmm. And then he looks at him and he goes, perfect. perfect. <laughs> the eggnog is perfect. So there's our second perfect. The hors d'oeuvres are perfect. But did you notice when he took a bite of the hors d'oeuvres, before he said perfect, he like, threw the half-eaten one back on the platter. Yeah, he just took a bite of it and, yeah, it threw it back on and there. Then Somebody's like, going to get that one. <laughs> so now, Balky is starting to try to tell Cousin Larry what's happening. He goes, Cousin, a funny, funny thing happened while I was taking down the decorations at work. And then Larry goes, <gasps> napkins. napkins. <laughs> <laughs> he picks up a stack of napkins and they go and they walk over and they sit on the, coffee, sit on the sofa in front of the coffee table. Uh, and Bucky tries to continue the story. He goes, look, I was at work finishing taking down decorations for Mr. Gorpley. And then Larry cuts him off again. He goes, you know, I knew Gorpley was slime, but making you work late on Christmas Eve is a new low even for him. Uh, which now it's going to make it even harder for Belky to yeah. tell him the thing. And then a super funny physical comedy moment as they both get up and they walk over to check the fireplace. Yeah, to make sure it's like perfect for the party. And he, uh, so B Larry walks over to the fireplace. Belky follows him. Larry like puts his hand down to see if there's enough heat. And he looks at Belky. He says, what do you, what do you uh -huh. think? Should I add another log? And he's like, you know, I want people to be comfortable, but not like too warm. I don't want them sweating. So they both stand with their butts toward the fireplace, yeah. like facing the inside of the room. And in sync, in, in <laughs> synchronized choreography, they push their hips out to the right. One way. One way. Then they push their hips out the other way, like kind of arched back. So their butts kind of in the fire. One, they put their hips one way, then they put their hips the other way, the then other they corner. do like a little circle. Oh my god, they do a whole hip a circle. A little in, in, circle in unison, in and then they look at each other and they go, perfect. perfect. <laughs> that <laughs> was, was so the funniest, funny most cute. random thing. Just a little hip. So little funny. Hip, hip pop here, a little hip here, then a hip circle swivel. Perfect. perfect. It was so good. And then Larry goes, Balky, it doesn't get any better than this. And Balky goes, well, we got to talk about that. Yes, there's a classic <laughs> Balkyism. We got to talk about that. Uh, and so Larry's like, what could be better than a Christmas party with the people you care about? And Balky's like, oh, how about this? How about inviting someone that is less fortunate than you are? And Larry's like, great idea. Balky's like, really? He goes, yes, we're going to try that next year. It's a great idea. <laughs> but next year, we'll have to do that. So then Balky says, well, I'm, I've am i already did it this year, he basically says. And Larry wants, Larry says, well, that's incredible. And Balky says, well, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> and he's Larry's back, like, you know, fussing with his whatever checklist he has on this clipboard. And he goes, who is it? Where'd you find this unfortunate people person? And uh, Balky says, well, to answer the second question first, I met him down at the paper. And then Larry kind of like is on to him a little bit. And then, but Le Balky says, I met him down at the paper and he immediately tries to divert by going over the Christmas <laughs> tree and saying how beautiful it is. <laughs> and Larry's like on to him. He follows him. He goes, who is it? And Balky says, you know what? This is the best eggnog I've ever had. <laughs> I love it. I'm waiting it. And <laughs> seconds? He, he drinks and it all. He goes, chugs seconds? it. And he goes, seconds? <laughs> Larry goes, who is it? And Balky goes, who is whom? <laughs> who is coming to our party? What party? What party? <laughs> the Christmas party. When? when? <laughs> the Christmas party we are having here tonight. <laughs> and he goes, oh, that Christmas party. What was the question? What was the question? That's great. <laughs> and just then, there's a knock at the door, and they both look at the door, and Balky, without thinking, just goes, 
oh, that must be Mr. Gorbley now. And then Larry turns around with his buggy Larry eyes and they're staring at each other trying not to laugh. And we fade out. Uh, to end the to end the act, but it's that frantic, panicky, buggy eyed Larry I love, face, he like just, in Balky's face. He just blurts out, "Oh my goodness, that could be Mister Corpley now." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was the question? Such funny things. What was your favorite part of this episode, listener? You can let us know. You can join the conversation. We have a lovely Facebook group. There's a link in the show description. And I post a link to episodes we will be reviewing a few weeks in advance. You can watch the episode. I am DB TV. Leave your thoughts, observations. I am I am DB TV. You are? I am DB TV. You are DB TV. You are DB. BDB. Anyways, that's where you can meet other Perfect Strangers fans and get your comment on the show and your observation and, you know, Geek out about perfect strangers. It's a lot of fun. Geek out. Geek away. Okay. So now we have act two. And we pick up right where we left off with Larry, buggy eyed Larry, staring at Balky, <laughs> pissed off and incredulous. And there's another knock at the door. And he's, but, but they're not tending to the door because Larry needs to have this out with Balky. He says, You invited Mr. Gorpley. Are you crazy? <laughs> Larry says he specifically said he did not want him at the party and he's like pushing he's like inching in on Balky Balky's right up against the Christmas tree and he's Balky grabs two candy canes from the Christmas tree and he holds them up in a cross uh, what, what, <laughs> against Larry Larry a Christmas vampire against, what happened yeah, here what's going like on that. and so basically Balky reminds him that Larry had said that the Christmas party is for is a time for all friends to gather and share Christmas spirit. And that, and he says, and Larry says, Gorpley's not my friend. And Balky says, well, he is my friend and it's my party too. I'm going to let him in. And so Balky starts for the door, but then Larry runs in front of him, grabs this big wreath from the door and like <laughs> tires him, you know, like yeah, just in puts the cartoon. Over his head and his arms just are pinned puts because the of this wreath. And pins over yeah. Balky's head and pins his arm down. A lot of great physical comedy yeah. coming up in this quick and then in this scene. Grabs him, um, like slaps a hand over his mouth, and they both like back to against the door. And he grabs him from behind door. and turns him. Yeah. And then uh Larry does a little Swedish voice. He goes, Yeah, who is there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trying to be a, a, a Norwegian or something to to mask. And you hear it's Harriet. And I'm ready to party, she says. And he goes, oh, it's Harry. Oh, oh, he pulls the wreath out, Balky, yes. uh, opens the door, come in. He hurriedly enters. Harriet's there and Jimmy is there. A bunch of them arrive together. Harry, Jimmy, some other people. Yeah. And they're all saying, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And Larry's a little bit relieved because it's not Gorpley there to ruin the party. And there's this uh, little running gag where Balky is like kissing yeah. all the women on the cheek, but then he gets yeah. then a man steps up and he's like, oh, oh, and he, uh, yeah. he's about to kiss him because he just Which, keeps going. 1988. Man, I know. He could have kissed him on the cheek. That. It would have yeah, been exactly. fine. But now, he did, yeah. it happens a few times because this whole sequence now happens like uh, yeah, three so times. Yeah, that's the first time. Yeah. So uh, that first batch comes in. They throw their coats off. They go get eggnog. They put their presents down. And Balky goes, have some eggnog. Let us know if there's too much nog. <laughs> Which is the nog part. Is it <laughs> What's too much the nog It's the noggiest eggnog I've ever had. Then there's and another knock at the door. Second knock, yes. And Larry trying to shush everyone. He's like, everybody be quiet. Uh, and Balky's heading for the door. And Larry again throws the wreath over Balky's head again and pins him down and covers his, his mouth, spins him around, backs up to the door. And this time he goes, hola, in a, in a Mexican accent. Who is it? And then this is so <laughs> funny. He goes, hola. And then from the other side of the door. Oh, yeah. He goes, who is it? <laughs> From the other side of the door, we hear Lydia's voice go, Ramon? <laughs> is that you? Oh, it's a Ramon. <laughs> and Larry's going, oh, it's Lydia. It's and Lydia. Take, again, takes the wreath off Lydia. of Balky, opens the door, pulls Lydia in very quickly, spins her around. Goes to, like, check. Check the, the hallway, make sure Gorpley's not out there. And uh, Lydia's all impressed. She's like, ooh, muy macho. She it feels as, this is weird. Who is Ramon yeah. and why are they doing Spanish now? Because and then, then, like, Lydia feels his, his muscles. Muscle and then Larry does this weird. creepy, Feliz Navidad. And yeah. like, I'm like, what's going on here? What, what is, is this, happening? What is, is this whole with Lydia? Yeah, Spanish bit on? that started because with Ola? Gen 
Anyway, um, so he like takes a quick look in the hallway and he shuts it and Balky welcomes Lydia in. He and he takes off her wrap thing and she is wearing this like Oh my god, she's wearing this crazy outfit. She looks like she's Christmas wrapped in the eighties. It's like a Christmas wrapping eighties. You dress. hear the audience go, Woo when like yeah. she takes her coat off. It, I can't even describe this dress. It's blue and easy. black polka dots with a big wide collar uh, sh- straps. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how you, how you describe this dress. It is crazy. Anyways, there is yet another knock on the door and Larry shushes everyone again. And again, Balky tries to beat him to the door. And again, Larry throws the wreath over Very Balky, crazy. spinning him down, spinning him, grabbing his mouth. And- Yes, and uh, he's not letting him talk. And then he goes, they're back, like, again, with their back against the door. <laughs> and Larry goes, it's some kind of, like, and this time he does, British he does, like, or yeah, Irish accent. Yeah, it's like accent. an English accent, yeah. And he goes, and who might that be? <laughs> and this time you hear Mary Ann going, oh, sorry, but you must have the wrong apartment. Like, you've been to this apartment yeah, I how know, many that's times? that's a funny line. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, it's Mary Ann. Mary Ann, it's Mary Ann, oh. <laughs> And then they pull the wreath off Balky once again over the door. Jennifer, Marianne, and, and more. And they're wearing people. some tight dresses, and the audience was like, yeah. woo, again. And then some more random people that I guess work in the mailroom down in right. the Chronicle. We don't know. So and once again, Larry looks out the hallway, and at this point, Harriet is on to them, and she comes up to them and goes, Balky, what is going on? And Balky says, Cousin Larry's having a nervous breakdown. I love that they brought that back. I love it. Nervous nerv- breakdown. Yeah. That's not the first time they've used that. And it's a thing. I love it. Yeah. We're having a nervous breakdown. And he explains to Harriet, he's having a nervous breakdown just because Balky invited someone to the party who's a little less fortunate than they are. <laughs> and then Lydia takes this opportunity to be like, oh, real classy, Larry. Larry. <laughs> And Harriet's like, well, that's nice, Balky. Who is it? And he says, Mr. Gorbley. No, Harriet goes, now, what's this guy's name? Yeah. And he goes, Mr. Gorbley. And she goes, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Just everybody, everybody not everybody. only her, but everybody <laughs> starts grabs grabbing the their coats, <laughs> ready to leave all the Chronicle people. Great timing. She's instantly just like, good night, everybody picks up her coat. Oh, and Larry's like, no, no, wait, 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 wait. He goes, look, just because he's invited doesn't mean we have to let him in. Oh, that's mean. He that's goes, mean. So mean. He goes, when he knocks on the door, we'll just, we're going to quiet. We'll be quiet. And he'll think he's got the wrong apartment. Uh, and Jennifer goes, I can't believe this. No one can be that bad. And then everyone just starts telling, complaining at about the Mr. Gorbley at the same yeah. time. They're just starting having horrible Gorbley stories. And, and Balky's like, okay, okay. He gets everyone to quiet down. He goes, Gorbley, Mr. Gorbley is not popular. I get that. And he goes, and I'm in an okay place about it. <laughs> Which was such a funny and weird line. He, <laughs> like he, he acknowledges. not popular. Yeah. I get that. And I'm in an okay place about it. He's like, That's I, how yeah. he says it. Like, it is very, yeah. it's very weird. It's very like, the modern. Laughs yeah. At, yeah, it's modern. Right? It's a very modern he's thing like, to say. It's like I'm an okay place about it. Like He's, he's yeah. come to terms with nobody likes Gorplay, and he's not a pleasant fella. But he says, let me say this. I invited him to this house. And when he comes here, I'm going to let him in. And this is great. Then there's a knock at the door. Larry shushes everyone. You hear Gurpley go, Bartagamus, Appleton, and Balky's about to open the door. And they all bum rush Balky and grab him and lift and him off vertically, uh, horizontally, horizontally, turn him horizontally, and cover his mouth. And they literally have him, like, restrained. They're all holding him. <laughs> and amazing. Lydia's, like, covering his mouth. And we <laughs> like, hear Gurpley. Is, is this necessary? <laughs> Yeah, they all are on Larry's side here. It's just Balky. Well, Jennifer thinks it's terrible, too. And then we hear Gorbley's voice again. He's like, I know you're in there. This <laughs> happened before, you know. <laughs> and then on the other side of the door, we hear Harriet explain that the same thing happened last year at Lydia's birthday party. And they tried to outweigh him and sat in the dark for four hours listening to him pound on the door. And Lydia explains all this, and then we hear Gorpley say, it was five hours, and I brought a sleeping bag this time. <laughs> so he could clearly hear everything so that's he happening. he hear yeah. everything. So Larry's like, okay, we're going to have to let him in. At this point, they have no other option. You stop being mean. Let the poor guy in. So they put Balky down, and Balky goes, well, now I'm disheveled. As he fixes his clothes, I got all messed up. And he tells them, you're going to see deep down inside Mr. Gorpley, there is an ember. Of the Christmas spirit. And if we just treat him with some kindness, I think we can fan it into a flame. 
And Harry goes, good, I'll get the matches. <laughs> she walks <laughs> over to the fireplace. Balky, of course, stops her, and he's still trying to explain to everyone, and he tells everyone, like, when we open the door, let's give him a really beautiful Merry Christmas, a really good one. And they open the door, and Gorpley walks in. They all say Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas. With so much joy. <laughs> and Gorpley, like just snidely, is like, mm. he looks around. He's like, mm, how festive! It looks like Kris Kringle threw up all over your living room. <laughs> and then he laughs, and everyone else is kind of oh, like shocked. The first of many Gorpley insults that we oh get to gosh. enjoy. So they transition to a little bit later. In the party, everybody's mingling. Larry uh, goes over to Gorpley and asks him if he's having a good time. And then Gorpley just goes, mm, better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. And he laughs Ugh. at that. Just Gorpley just can't say anything yeah. nice about anything. Uh, and then suddenly the door to Bal- from Balky's bedroom opens and Balky Claus is here. Bal- we, hear, we see Balky <laughs> in this Santa outfit and beard and everything and a big belly, something clearly strapped to his waist. And he goes, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It's Balky Claus. This is uh, the second appearance of Balky Claus. And we've seen Balky Claus before, yes. Yeah, I love Balky Claus. And he has a bag of gifts for everyone. And he says, it's prison time. Balky Claus has presents for all of you. So he sits down on the couch next to Gorp Lee. And everybody sits around in the living room area. And the first one he pulls out is a present for Harriet from Lydia. And, and he goes, Harriet open it, open it, open it. He, no, he goes, open it. <laughs> open it. Oh, that's open what he does. Yes, open, open it. it. He does that after. It's so cute. I yeah, love it. It's so that. cute. Open it. And everyone's <laughs> going, open it. And she opens it. And it's this like plaid scarf. And everyone's like, oh, how nice. <laughs> and then Gorpley's like, real nice, Lydia. They're giving them away at the gas station with every fill up. <laughs> and you see Lydia get up and start to lunge at him. Yeah. And, uh, and Harriet, Harriet pulls him out, him. right? And the next present. He Balky Claus pulls out is a present for Lydia from Harriet. And he gives her he gives Lydia the box and he goes, Open it, open it. <laughs> and she opens the box and and pulls out a book and it's some new mystery uh murder mystery latest thing. Uh, and she says, I've been dying to read this. And Harriet's like, I know. And then Gorpley. Out of nowhere goes, I'll save you 600 pages. The Countess did it. Oh, my God, Gorbley. Boo. And Harriet gets pissed. <laughs> I love this line. She gets up with the book and she goes, why don't we see if he can swallow this sideways? And they all yeah. start to lunge at him and Balky has to, has to calm everyone down. But uh, listen, spoiling a book, that is a really, that is a social contract that you're not supposed to break. It reminds me of when. Especially a mystery book. Yeah. The Harry Potter books came out and there were yeah. some really mean people that would do drive-bys and the people waiting in line oh, and yell, yell out the ending. That's so stupid. Just to be mean. It's so dumb. But Gorbley, you can't spoil books like that. What are you doing? That is no. serious party foul. Anyway, Harry is about to attack him. Everyone's getting mad. Balky calms them all down. He goes, sit down, sit down, please. This is not Geraldo. Oh, my God. That's a big applause laugh from the audience on this Huge line, Huge applause laugh. It might have been improvised, but... Uh... So, Geraldo, of course, is a reference to the Geraldo Rivera show. Yeah. Uh, which was a daytime sort of talk show, a la Jerry Springer. Kind of very before, much... a precursor to Springer, yeah. even. And if you don't know what the Springer show was or the Geraldo show was, it was kind of like these uh, like panel talk shows where they brought real people and like discovered if someone was the baby's dad or not <laughs> with DNA tests or like scorned lovers would would face each other and say what they had to say. But there was a and lot tempers of fights. Would flare, yeah. yeah. And there were a lot of fights. And um, and Geraldo, you know, would like get in the middle and get injured and stuff like that. So there was a, there was always big fights on Geraldo. Also, what's funny is Maury Povich does the same thing. They would throw chairs. So the Maury Povich show just ended. Jerry Springer ended. And now we're never going to find out who anybody's baby's daddy is. It's just, there's no place to do this anymore. So those are done. (laughs) But yeah, so they would like throw chairs. So he says, I think maybe the audience laughed because Bronson Pinchot probably just threw this in there. Sit down, sit down. This is not this Geraldo. Is not Her- also in the 80s, Geraldo did that thing where he was trying to find uh, Al Capone's vault and he would live on TV, he busted oh. down a wall and there was nothing there. Like it was not there. He was wrong. Is Geraldo, was the Geraldo show based in Chicago? 
Or, uh, or, I'm not I mean, sure. I think it was New York. Yeah, sure. But okay. he is on CNN still to this day. Geraldo oh, wow. Rivera reporting, I believe, for CNN. Yeah. He's been yeah. around. He's been around for a long time. Still going. Okay. So now, Balky, it's time for Balky to give uh, the present to Jennifer from Marianne, your roommate, he says. And then he goes, oh, wait, wait, wait. I also have one to Jennifer from Larry. For some reason, he decides to give these two at the same time. You're going to find out why. Yeah. Uh, and as she's about to open Larry's, but Marianne goes, oh, wait, wait, wait. Open mine first, right? So right. Uh, Jennifer opens uh, the box and uh, pulls out a pink sweater with white glittery zigzags, exactly the same sweater, same sweater. that Larry had bought Jennifer earlier that Gorpley had witnessed Larry showing off, yes. right? So when she pulls out this sweater, the reaction look on Gorpley's face yeah, is hilarious. He's like, this is delicious. <laughs> he's like, oh, he looks at him. It's, he's like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening, right? I, That's the look he's on like, his face. I'm here for this. <laughs> and yes. so we learned Larry did get ripped off because Jennifer's like, Mary Ann, this is lovely. It must have cost you a fortune. She goes, it did, $29.95. <laughs> and Gorpley <laughs> loves that. He starts laughing and he goes, wow, I've seen him for a hundred and a quarter. And he's like just roasting Larry on the side. And then he goes, why don't you open up the present from Appleton? I'm dying to see what it is. Just oh, making things worse. Wow, Garbley. He's having a blast though, really, at this and point. Larry tries he's enjoying to stop himself. And she's like, he's like, you don't need to open that, whatever. And Jennifer's <laughs> like, no, no. Jennifer opens it and in front of everybody pulls out the exact same sweater. <laughs> and Jennifer here is like really not gracious. No, she's what are you supposed to say? Rude. What are you she's okay? Like, what does she oh, say? Gee, thanks, Larry. This is really nice. I, you just can't have too many of these. <laughs> what, what are you actually? I was thinking about that. I'd be like, what is a good response here? It's well, you could of, say it's the thought that counts. It's, it's very beautiful. They couldn't have known. Yeah. You're both, you could, yes. But she goes, ah, you can't have too many of these. <laughs> And Gorpley goes, yeah, good move, Appleton. Boy, I bet you feel like a real jerk. And just continues to belly laugh. And really, this is the most fun Gorpley's had at this party so far. He's just having a ball. Yeah, Gorpley's loving all of this. And then Larry finally breaks. He just looks at everyone. He's like, all right, that's it. You're out of here. <laughs> and everyone jumps up to grab Gorpley to like force him to leave. Larry gets up to open the door. They're dragging him, trying to drag him outside. They do they, drag him outside pick, all the way like out. Pick to him the, up? They pick him up. They're like going to toss him in the like stairwell this or something. Comes, yeah. comes down on him, lifts him up, and takes him out into the hallway. Balky's like, wait a minute. And and Larry's like, we're taking out the trash. <laughs> and Balky intervenes. He runs out the door into the hallway, comes back in carrying Gorpley slung over his shoulder. Yes. <laughs> and he takes him all the way by the kitchen counter and everyone runs back in. But Balky steps in between them, between the mob and Gorpley. <sighs> Everyone's like, and Larry's like, give, give him back. Let us have him. And Balky says, calls it out. He says, you've turned into a Christmas <laughs> mob. A Christmas mob. Uh, they are. And Larry, you know, to his defense, says, well, he's been kind of a jerk all night. He's been asking for it. And now we're going to give it to him. Lydia <laughs> goes, we're going to give it to him. They're just, they're out for blood at this point. It's and Balky's so crazy. like, don't hurt anybody on Christmas Eve. And then, so Balky is like sticking his neck out, uh, neck out, trying to save Gorpley from this mob, which are the party guests. And then we get this speech. Oh my God, an amazing Gorpley. monologue from Sam Anderson here. He says, oh, relax, Bartakamas. These people can't hurt me. You think by throwing me out of here, you're going to spoil my Christmas? Hey, I've had rotten Christmases before. Like the one three years ago when my wife said, Merry Christmas, I'm divorcing you. Or how about that one when I was in high school and I finally met my real father and he stuck around long enough to have a drumstick and steal all the money I'd save for college. Oh, man. Or uh, there was always the one when I was eight in our trailer burned down. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, that was a good Christmas. I got to sleep in a real bed at the Red Cross. So don't worry about me getting hurt on Christmas. It's not going to happen. 
But it wouldn't be Christmas if somebody didn't try. Happy holidays. Oh, man. That was, that was like. That's like his mic drop and he starts to leave. It was so. Uh, that was but crazy. We, it was so real and like humanizing him. We learned a him. lot about Gorpley yeah, here. He had most... a rough. He was poor. He had a rough childhood. And it makes sense because you know what they say. Hurt people hurt people. Rough childhood. And so but rough he was hurt years. his whole life. And he turns Wife around by. Being a jerk to everyone else. It, but like amazing, yeah, character development really quickly. Yeah. The most we ever find. And you really, you start to feel bad like for Like a really him. quick backstory. You instantly and like feel bad five for lines. Him. Yeah. yeah. And it's so, and he did a great job like delivering it. Like, like yeah. Sam Anderson's really Very good. Very emotional. Yeah. yeah. So he's about to leave and Balky just like, he goes, no, no. He goes, okay, that's enough. Come here. Sit down. Sit over here. He's like, you can't leave because Balky Claus has a present for you. Uh, and Gorbley like scoffs. He's like, "What for me in there? No." He's like, "Come on." Uh, and uh, he goes, "Get real, Bartokamus." And Belky goes, "I have never been realer, right?" And he pulls out this box, and he points out to Mister Gorbley. He says, "I believe this is your name on the tag." And Gorbley reads it. It says, "To Mister Gorbley, have a merry Christmas from your friend, Belky." Bal- Oh, Aww. so right there. So he hands him the box. Corpley opens it, and then Balky again and is going, we hear, "Open it, open it, we hear, open it, open it, open it." And now we hear the lesson time music yeah. sort of starts under all of this, but it's like lesson time Christmas music, emotional music. But uh, it starts as he's giving him the box, and he says, "Open it, what's open in the it. box? The Davros cup." Oh my God! That Balky's mama said, "Balky, wow." And Larry can't contain his thoughts because he says them out loud. He said, Belky, that was the gift from your mama. Yeah. And Gorbley is like shocked. He's shocked that Balky is giving it to him. He said, I thought it meant a lot to you. And Balky says, it does mean a lot to me. It's a gift of love. And my mother taught me that a gift of love has to go to the one who needs it the most. And right now, that's you. Oh, oh my God. This is where the first time I watched it, I was like, I was close. I was tearing up because Gorbley's like, I don't have a gift for you. And Balky's like, your gift is taking my gift. Basically. Uh, And then Gorbley just choking up. This is so great. His Sam Anderson did such a good job. He goes, nothing like this has ever happened to me. I don't know what to say. Nobody has ever given me a gift that meant something before. And you could see him choking up. And he goes, I feel a... Kind of strange, uh, sort of a warm. warm. And he makes the face. <laughs> He's like, like I'm almost starting to like you people. And, and Balky goes, "What you're feeling is the Christmas spirit." And then Gorbley's like, "Do you feel?" He looks at everyone and he says, "Do you feel this every Christmas?" And everyone sort of nods their head, yes. And Larry, this is a great, great line. Yeah. Larry says, "Except for Balky, he feels like this every day." Oh. And then they all say Merry Christmas yeah. to Mr. Gorpley. And Larry sits down on the on the couch next to him and he says, I'm sorry I tried to lock you out. Uh and and then Mr. Gorpley said he would he would have done the same thing in his place. <laughs> he realizes he's been a miserable person yeah. this whole and time. And so then he he becomes kind for just a moment and he says, Merry Christmas, Appleton. And Larry says, Merry Christmas. And then Balky starts to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, which is a strange song for a, a, <laughs> a, a Mipia me, to start singing. Um oh, it's a Christmas song. It's a Christmas song, but you'd think he would sing some like me posy and Christmas song. Um, well, everyone can't sing it with them, which is I what know. happens. Everybody joins in, and, and Gorpley is singing too. And then the episode ends. They they all start singing, and we fade out and roll credits. There is something that we're missing on the IMDb. DB, <laughs> now I'm messing it up. I am IMDb TV. Uh, that uh, I read about at the end of this episode, there was a little scene at the end of the credits where supposedly there was a shot of Balky and Larry sitting at the window, looking out the window at the snow, and then they superimpose the words happy holidays. Oh, you know what? And that was probably only shown like the very first time it aired. I bet yeah, it reruns. I don't they think cut it's on any too. recording. But it yeah. was their happy holidays greeting 
from uh, the show. The network, yeah. <laughs> uh, before we uh, discuss our thoughts, sister, I want to tell the listener you can get great Dance of Joy swag and merch at our Tee Public shop. There's a link in the show notes. Just visit danceofjoypod.com yeah. slash shop. Get a t-shirt, get a hoodie, get a mug. Buy all the things. Use them around your daily life. Show it off to people. Send us a photo. We want to yes. see what you got. Uh, the T Public always has lots of sales. So check it out. Uh, let me ask you something. This, like I said, this was uh, a very heartwarming, loving, touching. You get yeah. to humanize Gorpley, which yeah. is now we have a we kind of know why he's been a jerk to these guys. But yeah. now that like he says he's starting to like them moving forward, do you think he's now nice to them? Probably not, right? No, this, I think he's gonna go back to being. I think he's gonna go right back to being horribly unreasonable jerk. and being yeah. a jerk. Even though, look, they bonded here. Balky gave him the cup, and mm-hmm. he got him to cry. What do you think he's gonna do with that cup? Oh, he's gonna put like his tax returns in it. I don't know. He's gonna <laughs> fill it with. Cotton balls for paper cleaning a paper clip, yeah. Receipts. It's just a, uh, yeah. You can drink. Uh, I don't think he's gonna drink out of it. But <laughs> it's the it's the it's the only gift he's ever got that was thoughtful. Like Aww. that meant something. Like, that's so sad. Well, I felt bad for him. Like I felt bad yeah. for him. I was like, man, Such yeah. A nice Christmas. Even his mom didn't Even want him around. His mom didn't want him around. He can't catch a break. Poor. Poor Gorpley, but he's going to go right back to being a jerk. Yeah, it was a really nice episode. It had some depth to it. It had some conflict. Especially yeah. after the clip show last week. Like, this one yeah. really felt a lot more substantial. Uh, and this is the second Christmas episode we mentioned, but it's also, sadly, the last Christmas episode they do oh, on no. season four. There's still, like, four more seasons, three and a half. And you would think they could bring Balky Claws back every time. Why wouldn't you do yes. more? I don't know. Open it. Open, Open it. It was great. And so that means this is the second, the last time we're going to see superimposed snow. Well, there may be other winter episodes, <laughs> yeah. but maybe not Christmas. But, you know, time flies in Perfect Strangers universe. This snow was more convincing to me than the last time better. we saw the snow. They got yeah, better. They it got, got better. They, they spent more on the snow budget. Fake snow budget. Got a little bump. <laughs> also, did you notice that like Jimmy and Allison were there and then they were just gone? For a while, and there was like Jimmy other random and people a there. Woman. Yeah. yeah. Um, random woman, and they were replaced by other random people. Where did they go? Well, what happened? you know, it's a party. People come people and go, come and they go. leave. Uh, they had or other parties. To go alternatively, to. there was um, an earlier draft in which those two characters had some lines <laughs> and got upset at Gorpley and walked out uh, in the middle of the party. Oh, maybe that so, happened too. And, yeah. <laughs> so maybe they s- filmed a couple of different versions of the story. And cut that out so we just see them and then don't see them. Um, but I loved, I loved the ending. I thought it was very satisfying. Let's find out what our listeners thought, sister. Listener John Adama says a couple of good observations, a lot, some of which I also thought. John writes, is this the first time the theme was shortened or was I just not paying attention? It was shortened. He means the opening scene. It was shortened. It used to be a little over a minute. And now it's down to like 35-ish seconds. It was like 35, 40. But I think it, it depends on the episode if they have more stuff they the play. Because like yeah. the last couple of episodes was the full right. uh, thing. And then it's just, you know, they get... Interesting. They gave but maybe like 20 we're, seconds. I think we're going to see the shortened one. Oh, really? Okay, that's good uh, to know. From now on. That'll be interesting. From now yeah. on. Um, well, we'll pay attention and see. Okay, Cousin John Adam also says, Larry's gift reminds me of a sexy Charlie Brown costume. It's <laughs> true. The, the zigzag the, pattern. The yes. zigzags were kind of similar. <laughs> he writes, evidently Larry's need to be home for Christmas has passed. We talked about yeah, that. Yeah, he doesn't care about going Just home as anymore. Well. Yeah. I'm sure it's for retakes and sound, but I hate the wrapped lid separate from the wrapped box. <laughs> I've never seen it in real life ever. This is a very this is good an interesting comment, observation. Yeah. Cousin John. I always wonder about that. Every time I see this on every TV show, I'm like, nobody Have you ever wrapped boxes. or gotten a present First like of that? All, or you wrapped don't a present get like that? Boxes no, like no. that from yeah, stores. But lids. you know what? One of these days, I'm going to wrap a present like that. No, but that's annoying. Like, it's like twice know, the amount of wrapping. Like, it's so much. I mean, yeah. obviously, it's for time. Like, it's easier to yeah. open quickly on a TV show than. And retakes. Yeah. So than you don't having to rip stuff open. Unwrap. But it is a funny observation. Like, who gets gift? I've never seen a gift like that either. This Give me is a, a very box good that observation. Opens. Yeah. But the other thing is, you could reuse that box, no problem. Like you know, yeah. you just pay, it's, yeah, it's you all don't done. have to tear the paper. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you put in a little more work on the front end, then you can reuse it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a go. good point. Okay. All right. And then Cousin John always gives us like an overall comment about the episode. So here's what he wrote. I'm a sucker for Christmas episodes of most shows, and this is the perfect example of why. It's very funny, but it earns its soft moment. Gorpley has been a jerk the whole show, so this didn't involve any sudden change in character. I know I'll be watching this one again in December. Yeah, it's a solid, yep. solid Christmas solid spirit. Christmas, episode, Christmas yeah. lesson, Christmas spirit episode. And then we have cousin Pam Hitchcock who writes, Lydia looks like she just rushed in from a job modeling avant-garde ladybug outfit. <laughs> she looks like a blue that's a ladybug. Good description it's like a blue ladybug dress. costume. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. And also Gift of the Meepiat is a take on Gift of the Magi by Oh Henry, but they're not really the same story. Or the same chocolate bar. Yes, or the same candy it's bar. It's a delicious <laughs> chocolate bar. Great stuff. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, for listeners. Your comments. No, we did not have a Don't Be Ridiculous. Of course I have Don't Be Ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, oh no, there's no Dimitri Sheep appearance. We also did not see Dimitri. No. You'd think Dimitri Sheep would be They were in the apartment the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could yeah. be decked out. Uh, That's but I guess point. they decided Dimitri was tired, needed that a rest. Maybe a he's maybe he's point. on strike. I don't know. Maybe maybe there was a sheep strike in '88, in the winter of '88. Okay, now we're at the segment of our show that we call "Perfect Strangers Today" or "PS Today," in which we discuss. Uh, if we were remaking this story today in 2022, how would things be different? Anything from small details to parts of the storyline, would it hold up today or would we have a slightly different story? What are your thoughts, Imran? First thing that came to mind, ring camera doorbell. You don't you don't got to guess who's on the other side of the door anymore. You don't have to do funny accents. You, and- no, you would see them walking up and you would have time yep. to prepare, maybe shut the lights off. Everyone yep. hide. Yeah. Uh, so stuff yeah, like that. so this segment, Perfect Strangers, today we we tend to fall back on <laughs> technology, technology and social media. Um, I was also thinking like, if they never did invite Gorbly, he would see it on everyone's like Instagram. Oh, feeds he would have because you know he doesn't. Yeah. He's not connected with anyone, but he like follows them. I bet he stalks everyone stories. on Instagram yeah. because he thinks he's their That's boss and he, he has to know. Yeah. And then he would just get mad and feel bad. And then he, and but, then he would you know, the basic concept, uh, there's still times when you don't yeah. want to invite a certain somebody, especially if it's a work thing, and you're like, mm, do we? can we not yeah. tell him yeah, that we're going right. out But you kind of have to if it's a work thing. I don't, I don't see how Larry ever thought he was going to get away with that in the beginning. Like, you invited everybody else, presumably, in the you know, that, you know, in the Chronicle. We're all going to talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see how that would have been possible. And Balky called him out on that appropriately. Like, I mean, yes, he was less fortunate. It, you know what? This doorbell talk reminds me of, you ever heard um, Sebastian Maniscalco has this uh, bit yes. called Company. Company. It so is funny. so f- about the difference between when somebody rang the doorbell back then versus and now. Now. Yeah. And his mannerisms and his miming and him acting. So it's funny. So, I'm going to watch up. that again. Oh, my God. This. Company will come over. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but everything else, like you could still end up buying the same Christmas gift for someone. Yeah, but this time um, you could have like the gift receipt in there, like the Amazon. Yeah, you're like, well, that's right. you can just you get whatever you receipts. want. Um, you, you know, you could still invite someone to a party and give them a gift that your mama sent you from Meepos. Yeah. Uh, all of that holds up. Eggnog is still a thing, I think, I'm told. I think I don't it know. is too. I don't drink I, it. I, I see it at the at the Target. Eggnog is a thing. Yeah, you wouldn't make it. I guess some people still make it uh, from scratch. Other than that, it would hold up. Yeah, it pretty much hold up. Listeners, if you have any thoughts um, for Perfect Strangers today, let us know. Would this episode hold up? I think it would. Next week, stay tuned. uh, The Cousins hire a maid. I'm told. A maid? Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's such a tiny apartment. I don't know why they need a maid. We'll find out. Well, it's like a big apartment. They had a whole cow in there. They did have a whole cow in there. Lots of live animals have come through their <laughs> dog. Uh, in the meantime, another way to support the show is by buying us a virtual coffee. It helps uh, keep the show going. All costs go back to hosting the show. Visit danceofjoypod.com slash support. You'll see a little buy me a coffee. You can buy multiple coffees, one coffee. You could do a subscription coffee thing. And uh, we appreciate every little bit helps. And we appreciate your support. 
And in the meantime, check us out at danceofjoypod.com. Uh, there, that's our website. You can find all the links for where you can find the podcast, where you can subscribe. You can leave us a rating and a review. Uh, you can even press a little button right there on the website and leave us a voice message. Tell us about your favorite Christmas party. Tell us about your thoughts on this episode or any other episode, or just say hi, leave us a voice message, or you could do it the old fashioned way and send us an email at danceofjoypod at gmail.com. Also on our website are links to all of our social media accounts, our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please find us there. We'd love to connect. We love to hear from other fans of Perfect Strangers. Uh, and we are on this mission to spread 22 minutes of joy at a time through the hilarity of Perfect Strangers. Imran, what is the most important thing our listeners should do? Well, if you're throwing a Christmas party, you got to make sure your egg to nog ratio is on point. Can't have too much. You got to invite everyone at the office. And you got to, unfortunately, you got to invite everybody. Even that weird guy with the red stapler in the background yeah. talks to himself. Be nice. Be kind. That's the most important thing. But the second most important thing you should do is share this show, Dance of Joy Pod, with a friend, with a stranger, with um, someone on the bus with you, just talk about it. Let people know. Get the word out there. We want everyone to know and love Perfect Strangers the way we do. Merry Christmas, listener. Thanks for listening. And now <laughs> we are so happy. Now we are so happy. We do the dance of joy. Hey, 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 hey.